Hey, I'm Chloe, an instructional designer here at Career Foundry. Today, I'm going to show you how to plan and prepare for a user research session. In previous videos, we've looked at what exactly user research is and why it's so important. We also introduced different types of user research, such as qualitative, quantitative, attitudinal and behavioural. In this video, I'll talk you through everything you need to conduct a successful user research session. First, I'll show you how to set meaningful research objectives. Then we'll consider what tools you might need. We'll also take a look at how to recruit participants. Last but not least, I'll share some general tips for making sure your UX research session runs smoothly. By the end of this video, you'll be ready to plan and conduct an effective user research session. Ready? Let's begin. How to set meaningful research objectives. Before conducting a user research session, you'll need to have a clear goal in mind. So how do you go about setting meaningful research objectives? Even if you're brand new to UX research, you've probably got more experience than you realise. Think about the last time you went on a trip somewhere. The chances are you looked up the best route to get there, researched hotels and local attractions, and sought out the best food spots. When conducting this kind of research, you have very specific goals in mind. These goals help you to stay focused and narrow down your options to those that are most relevant to your needs. UX research is no different. Before conducting a user research session, you need to be clear on what you want to find out. In other words, what information and insights will help to steer your design project in the right direction? What goals and outcomes will help you discover solutions for your users? Before you formulate a specific research goals, think broadly about what you're hoping to learn. Depending on what stage you are in the design process, it may be useful to hold a brainstorming session with key stakeholders in order to identify the most important objectives. Some common research goals include identifying users' general attitudes towards a problem or concept, gathering users' opinions on two competing websites or apps, seeing what kinds of tasks users perform and in what context, and collecting data points to validate or invalidate initial design ideas. Once you've established a wider goal, you can define a more specific research objective. For example, can users find the information they need when navigating my app? Or what steps do users take to complete a purchase on my website? It's okay to keep your research goals narrow. You don't need to uncover every single usability issue or friction point in one single session. Ideally, you'll conduct several user research sessions, each focusing on a specific objective. Well-defined goals will help to keep your user research session on track. They'll also help you identify the most suitable research methods and the tools you'll need. Speaking of tools, what tools do you need for your user research session? Before conducting a user research session, you'll want to make sure you've got all the necessary tools and equipment. The exact tools you need will vary depending on your chosen research method, so it's useful to make a checklist in advance. If you're conducting an in-person session, you'll need pens and paper, post-it notes and recording equipment for capturing video or audio. It's also a good idea to provide refreshments. You want your users to feel at ease. If you're testing a digital prototype, you'll need to provide laptops and set up the relevant software, such as Prot and Proto.io, which allow you to test digital prototypes on real users. You may also want to use screen recording software. Screen recording tools enable you to capture and later analyze how users interact with your website or app. If you're conducting a card sort, you'll of course need to have materials to hand. Likewise, if you're doing user interviews, you'll need a list of questions prepared. When conducting remote UX research, it's important to have all the relevant links handy, be it a link to an online questionnaire or a link to your website or digital prototype. So, once you've set up your research objectives and identified your chosen method, get to work on writing your checklist of tools. You'll be less likely to forget something on the day and can focus purely on getting the insights you need. Next up, let's take a look at how to recruit participants for your UX research. You can't conduct a successful UX research session without real human participants. But how do you go about recruiting them? You want your research participants to represent your target users, so start by coming up with a list of ideal traits. If you're designing an over 40s dating app, for example, you'll want to recruit people who are over the age of 40, own a smartphone, and have regularly used dating apps in the last six months. Now you have a clear idea of the kind of users you're looking for. So where do you find them? How you recruit your participants really depends on your budget and the type of product you're designing. If you have the resources, you could pay a specialist recruitment firm. However, it's perfectly okay to use a word of mouth approach. Try asking around among people you know or advertising on social media. 
If you've got a database of existing or past customers, that's also a great place to find suitable research participants. Another potential method is what's known as guerrilla recruiting. In this case, you'll approach people in a public place, say a coffee shop, and ask them to take part in a quick research session. It's important to note that you don't need hundreds of people in order to conduct an effective research session. In fact, the Nielsen Norman Group claim that the best results come from testing no more than five users and running as many small tests as you can afford. Believe it or not, you can catch around 80% of all errors by conducting research with only five participants. So focus on quality, not quantity. It's better to recruit a few users who accurately represent your target audience. How to make sure your research session runs smoothly. By now, you're well on your way to conducting an effective user research session. You've got your research objectives to hand, you've gathered all the tools you need, and you've recruited some suitable participants. What else can you do to make sure the session runs smoothly? First and foremost, put your users at ease. When conducting in-person UX research, take a few minutes at the start of the session to break the ice, set the scene, and provide clear, jargon-free instructions on what's about to happen. Reassure your users that they can be honest with their feedback and that no one's going to be offended if they criticise the design. And if you're recording the session in any way, make sure you get express permission to do so. Secondly, don't try to influence your users or steer their behaviour in a certain direction. In order to obtain useful insights, you need your users to act and interact as naturally as possible, so keep intervention to a minimum. Last but not least, be organised. If you've got people helping you to run the session, make sure everybody is clear on their role. Who will be taking notes, who will be asking the questions, who will be observing the users. So now you know how to prepare for a successful UX research session. Of course, the finer details will depend on the research method you're using, so be sure to plan your session with the specifics in mind. For more tips and insights, check out the other videos in our UX research series. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching, see you next time.